episode and this is your Nimi with you and today we are moving on to one poetry and the name of the poetry is The Tale of Custer the Dragon. Okay, from the title itself is very clear the poem is something related to the animal dragon. When you see or when you hear, hear a word about dragon, what is the first thing which comes into your mind? Yes, the dragon which is a very huge animal okay, which has got all those spikes on the back and it's got nice sharp nails and also you can see when it opens the mouth, the fire comes out. This is a picture which commonly everybody gets. So over here, as you can see on the board, it's written by a poet called as Ogden Nash. Ogden Nash is basically an American poet. You might be wondering, why is the kitten called black? Maybe because the kitten's color is black. And mouse, it's grey in color. And dog, it's yellow in color. But see the adjective used for the dragon. Covered dragon. What do you mean by the word covered? Basically, not brave. Or maybe a little that fear is there in the mind. So all these animals are also given a name. Kitten, ink. Mouse, blink. See? There are rhyming. Dog, mustard. And dragon, custard. So these are the names given for the pet. So the whole poetry is basically revolving, like revolving between or you can say within these characters. And obviously the main character called Belinda. So now we'll move on to the poem line by line. So you will have an idea what is this poetry all about. So I'll read the first stanza, then I'll explain. Belinda lived in a white house with a little black kitten and a little grey mouse and a little yellow dog and also one more thing. What did they have? He, the little girl also had a wagon. A little yellow dog and little red wagon and a real Leo, true Leo, little pet dragon. So that stops the first stanza. So in between, it's just the same. She's just introducing, these are my pets. And also one more thing she has got. What has she got? She's got a wagon. Now what's a wagon? Wagon is basically a kind of a carriage kind of thing where you can carry few little, little goods. So that is also there for Belinda. Maybe Belinda used that wagon to play. Okay. So these are things what she really had. And if you remember the last line. And a real Leo, true Leo little pet dragon you can find the word used over here realio trulio okay so we'll have to look into this particularly because it's very very important as i told you after the dog the he's uh, the belinda is also introducing about one thing and that's her wagon as i told you wagon is a vehicle where you can basically take the goods from one place to one place, last next place and in the last line of the poem the poet he has used the word realio trulio Okay, we all know that basically the poet is trying to remain really, truly, okay. He also had a custard, a dragon. So now, when the why is this poet changing certain words? And that's actually a particular technique used by the poets. And that's called poetic license. This might be something new to you because all the rest of the poetic devices we have already discussed in the other classes. This might be something new for you. Please make a note of it. So poetic license is a license given to the poets that poets can make certain changes in certain words. So instead of really truly, the poet has used really o, truly o, he also had a custard the dragon. So now we'll move on to the next stanza. I hope the first stanza is clear. Poet is introducing what Belinda had. Belinda had what? Belinda was living in a white little house and the house who had she was with a kitten, mouse, dog, dragon and she also had a wagon. I told you what is a wagon. This is in the first stanza. So now we'll move on to the second stanza. <clears throat> now the name of the little black kitten was Ink and the little grey mouse she called him Blink. And the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard. But the dragon was a coward. And she called him custard. So the second stanza you can find basically the poet, the poet is explaining the names of all the animals. And he says maybe the kitten is black in color. I gave it ink. And the mouse is almost grey in color. So I gave it blink. And the dog was yellow in color. So I gave it mustard. 
And the dragon was a who was a little a kind of a coward person. So I gave it custard, like calm and quiet. It's a soft kind of person. So these ways animals. Second stanza you can find. Uh, there are few words being repeated, uh, like little and all. But other than that, it's just introducing the names of the animals. So now we move on to the third stanza. Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on the top of him and underneath mouth like and underneath uh, and scales underneath mouth like a fireplace and chimney for a nose and really truly daggers on his toes. So listen, Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth. So if you can remember the picture of a dragon, it's almost green in color. It has got nice sharp teeth. It's a really huge animal. And spikes. What are basically spikes? Spikes are basically that pointed kind of thing. So basically his back has got that pointed surface. Now why? If someone comes, it's basically to protect the dragon. And then what he had, he also had underneath scales, obviously. As you can, you know what's a scale, right? Basically you may have seen just like a thin, you can say a bony plates which basically covers. So that is also there underneath the dragon's body. Underneath. And then what? And then he says, mouth is like a fireplace. As I told you before, dragons basically emit fire. So mouth is like a fireplace. So when you have like, what is it? It's called a simile. If you remember, okay. Simile, the second part device is pointillized. Simile, whenever you use a word as or like to compare one thing to another thing, it's called a simile. Now, then what? Mouth like a fireplace and chimney for a nose. Chimney for a nose. So, obviously, when the mouth fire is coming from the mouth, then from the nose, the smoke is also coming. Just now, in everybody's house in the olden days, we had chimney. Why is chimney used just to emit the smoke outside the house? Mm -hmm. so the same way over here, the chimney is compared to a dragon's nose. In the second stanza, very clearly you can find the poet is taking time or finding time just to explain about the animal custard. Hmm? Custard had spikes on the back, custard had scales underneath, scale this dragon emits fire from the mouth and from the nose the smoke comes in. So all those explanations given in the stanza. So now we'll move on to the fourth stanza. Belinda was as brave as barrel full of bears. So you know what's a barrel, right? Barrel is basically drum. So Belinda's bravery is compared to what? A barrel, a drum full of bears. You know, bears are basically strong and sharp and brave. So that's how it's been compared. A barrel full. Barrel is basically a very huge drum. So how many bears can be there inside? That much brave she was who Belinda. And an ink and blink chase lions on the stairs. Lions down the stairs. Okay. Ink and blink over there. Kitten and mouse were chasing home lion. See, it's basically an exaggeration. But still the poet wants to say that much importance Belinda gave to ink and blink. They were chasing lions on the stairs. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in the rage. The mustard, the dog was brave. Like what? Like what is this bravery compared to a tiger in the rage? Tiger in a rage. Rage means an angry tiger. Okay. So just like that, the dog's bravery is compared to the tiger. But Custard, the dragon who had all these kind of spikes and everything, always cried for a nice safe cage. So you can see the way how the poet has been... Uh, Compare in each animal. Where you have the kitten and the mouse chasing lions underneath the stairs, and you have the dog who is just so angry, like a bravery is compared to a tiger who was very angry, and this custard, our dragon, who's always crying for a nice, beautiful cage. From all this, it's very clear, poet really differentiates about like about these kind of pets, Belinda's pets. So now we'll move on to the fifth stanza. Belinda tickled him. Tickle means what? just stroking here and there so that he laugh. Tickle him. She tickled him unmerciful without showing any mercy. Belinda was tickling. Whom was she tickling? The dragon. Ink, blink and mustard. They rudely call him. You perceival. The mouse, the dog and the kitten call the custard as what? As perceival. Now what is perceival? Percival is a person. He was actually a knight or soldier. Okay. He was a soldier in King Arthur's court in the olden days. That's a character called Percival. 
Now, person was a person who always used to boast about I used to do that, I used to do this, all these kind of things. And when, when a real war happened, what happened? Percival, this knight, ran away. Ink, Blink and Mustard, all of them called Custard rudely as Percival. I told you what's a Percival. So now, what happened? They all sat laughing in the little red wagon. I remember telling you what's a wagon. Okay. So in Belinda's wagon, Ink, Blink and Mustard normally used to sit. And obviously dragon is a huge animal. It cannot sit inside the wagon. So all these three animals used to sit there and laugh. Laugh at whom? Laugh at Custard who is a very uh, what, calm and quiet and a person who always cries for a cage. And the really or truly or cowardly dragon. So all of the, these three animals sit inside the wagon and dragon used to be near and dragon always used to be really truly little cowardly dragon always used to keep his mouth shut. Okay. So this is there in the fifth stanza. Okay. So now we move on to the sixth stanza. Belinda giggled till she shook the house. Okay, Belinda was giggling. Really means basically laughing till the whole house shook. How can that happen? Exaggeration. What happened? And Blink said weak. Blink said weak. Which is giggling for a mouse. And what did Blink say? Blink said weak. Weak is a sound which is made. So now, we'll move on to seven stanza. Suddenly, suddenly, they heard a nasty sound. Nasty means, in, it, we in, I always use the word nasty smell. Over here, nasty sound means basically bad or unpleasant sound. And mustard growled and they all looked around. So obviously, this dog can sense it quickly because of the nose. So dog started growling, making barking. Meow, cried Ink. The kitten, obviously, the sound made by kitten is meow. And it was saying that, sound meow cried ink and oh cried belinda for there was a pirate climbing in the window so see together rhyming words for belinda the poet is used the word winda w-i-n-d-a so now that also comes under poetic license like really truly winda okay this is also a poetic license really truly so over there the poet is trying to get the rhyming scheme okay so because of that he's using the word winda now what happened? Pirate came in. Now who is a pirate? Pirate is a person basically who robs the ship. And all of you know that pirate is basically handicapped. So now a pirate came in when they heard an unpleasant sound. Uh, the kitten was making the sound. The dog was barking. Belinda said, oh. And then they saw, oh my god, there's a pirate over there. Seeing that they all were shocked. So now we'll move on to the eighth stanza. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right hand, and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright. And what is cutla cutlass? Cutlass is basically a short knife. His beard was black. One leg was a wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. So what happened? The pirate had in his left hand and his right hand, left hand and the right hand, he had pistol. In his mouth, he had knife. Okay, and one of the leg was basically made of wood. We know basically the pirates are handicapped. So one of the wood, leg was made about wood. And then what happened? Obviously everybody know pirate has entered the house and pirate is obviously going not to, has not come to do anything good. And they, he's basically going to harm. Okay, it was clear that pirate meant no good. They knew that pirate is not going to help them but literally are going to penalize them. So beard was also black. So these were the features of the pirate. We'll repeat again. The pirate had a gun in both the hands. He had knife on the teeth. He was biting the knife. Then what happened? He also had a wooden leg. Okay. And then he also had black beard. So these are the features of pistol. I'm sure that imagery has come into your mind, right? So now these are the features. And they knew it's going to affect them. The pirate is going to literally maybe kill them. Or the, the intention is not positive. Intention might be to harm. So, now moving on nine stands up. Belinda paled and she cried, help, help. But Mustard fled with a terrified yelp. So what happened? Mustard, the dog always used to be, uh, what, uh, so smart like a tiger, just made a sound and then fled, crying, yelp, crying, the dog fled. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household. Ink, who's a kitten, slowly went to its bottom of the house 
and little mouse blinks strategically mouse hold and mouse also strategically escape to the mouse hold where the mouse lives so the ink blink must have three of the animals are not found and Belinda is crying help help but up jumped custard beginning of the 10th stanza who came and who's it custard but up jumped custard snorting like an engine making an snorting means making an explosive sound came jumping whom ah dragon clashed his tail like ions in a dungeon clash means basically fighting fought persons with the tail so he's jumping and the tail is quite widely seen with a clatter and clank and jangling squirm he went in the pirate like a robin and the worm so over there the clatter clank and all are basically the sounds okay of hard objects falling so now the dragon jumped and then what happened all these sounds are the clank and jangling squirm clatter so all this clatter clank jangling squirm all those are the sounds of the objects falling down okay so all these objects are falling down he jumped on him and how it is compared it's come he went at the pirate like a robin at the worm you know who's a robin right robin are, robin is basically small bird and basically these robin birds eat small worms so just like a worm is there and the robin bird is going and eating the worm just like that it's compare like okay uh, the word used over there is the pirate he went at the pirate like the robin okay so the way the dragon has approached the pirate is compared to the bird to the bird who eats the worm so that's how he jumped onto the pirate the pirate gaped at belinda's dragon see nobody would feel there's a dragon inside the house the pirate gaped gave means open one oh, just like that at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon okay so he just gulped means swallowed what did he swallow swallowed basically a drink grog g-r-o-g grog is basically a drink drink maybe made of some mash made with uh, some fruits okay so taking that drink he just drank from his pocket flagon flagon is basically the container okay this container is made up of silver okay so now what happened Suddenly, when the pirate saw the dragon, he was gaped, he was shocked. Open mouth, he was shocked. But he had one feeling, he has got pistol in his hand. With one shot, the dragon be dead. So he took from his pocket this flagon. Flagon is a silver bottle. In the silver bottle, what was inside? Grog. Grog is some drink. He took this uh, flagon and then he just had. He fired two bullets, but they did hit. And Custer gobbled him every bit. So what happened? He took the gun and just shot. But then what happened? Dragon just, it didn't hit him. Dragon came, took the pirate, swallowed. Over. So simple it was for the dragon. So all these while you can find ink, blink and mustard making fun of the custard. But right now everybody were embracing and overjoyed. So we'll move on to the 13th stanza. But presently up spoke little dog mustard. I would have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. I was a little confused. Flustered means upset or confused. I was a little confused. Or else I would have been braver than the custard, the dragon. And up spoke ink and up spoke bling. Now the kitten and the mouse also started to speak. We would have been three times brave, we think. And custard said, and the dragon said, yeah, I quietly agree. That everybody is braver than me. Belinda as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chase the lions down the stairs. Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage but Custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. So from this uh, last sentence very clear, yeah this situation happened but still there's no change. All of them are being boasted and the Custard still uh, cries for a nice safer cage. So although these kind of incidents happen, there's no change. So this is about the poem, the tale of a custard, the dragon, the dragon who reacted when it was needed. So we need people like that to react when it's ill. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Until then, Nimi signing off. Bye.